Hey guys, it's Cynthia. Welcome back to my channel. I'm excited about today's video. I am going over part one of my 2022 planner setup. And as the title suggests, I'll be going over the bullet journal pages that I like to use in my planner. Now, I know some of you are like, what is bullet journaling? And bullet journaling is basically an organization system. It was developed by Ryder Carroll, and it uses symbols to help you kind of navigate or organize current and future events in your planner. So events, to-do lists, meetings, things of that nature. But over time, it's pretty much evolved into a more decorative means of planning where uh, people use stickers, uh, they use drawings, washi tape to help create their planner layouts on dot grid paper. And that's the part that kind of drew me into bullet journaling, the more decorative aspect of it. Um, I've said in many of my videos that I started my planner journey as a bullet journaler last year, and then I switched to happy planner this year. But there were were aspects of bullet journaling that I've still really enjoyed and I wanted to incorporate them in my planner so I created bullet journal pages for my planner this year and I loved them so much that I wanted to continue that into 2022 so I want to show you the planner pages that I created for last for this year plus the ones that I did last year to give you kind of an example of what they look like after the pen before I do that I want to show you this happy notes it is a guided journal it is what I use to get the paper to do my dot grid um, layouts. So I got this at Staples for maybe about five or six bucks. And they call it a guided journal because they give you some preset layouts in here in addition to the plain dot grid paper that I used. So I'll show you, they give you four dividers. And I love these because they are plain dividers. They don't have the monthly calendar on them. They just give you four of these that come with it. And then they give you these preset pages. So I'm gonna stand up and get it a little closer to the camera. The pages have these small gray dots all over them. That is the dot grid layout. But these pages have some other decorative elements on them. So this one has a border going all around the edge. And on the back side of it, they give you one long box with a banner and then a goals box and two other plain boxes. They give you this page, which has five boxes on the front, two with banners, two with doodles, and a plain one. And on the back side, they give you again that dot grid paper with the typewriter down in the corner. This page just has a banner at the top. And on the back side, they give you eight boxes, one with a header on it. And then this one looks very similar. They give you those same eight boxes with the header down here. And on the back side, again, that dot grid with the two flowers in the corners. The last preset page they give you, this one is called The Last Time You, and you go through and you can write in the last time you did certain things like washed your sheets in your bedding, cleaned out the fridge, things to keep track of um, that are pretty popular, things that people wanna keep track of. I probably won't use this page in my planner, but I tried to use these preset pages. I didn't know what to originally use them for, but I decided to incorporate them this year. But the real reason why I bought this Happy Notes was for this paper. This is the dot grid paper that I wanted. I love this one because it is absolutely plain. There's nothing coming down the spine, which I really wanted. If you look at a lot of the happy notes that are out there now, they do have some type of um, color or design going down the center, and I didn't want to do that. When you look at a lot of bullet journalers, um, their setups, they have particular themes that they work with. And so this year I wanted to create a theme for my planner setup pages. Basically I wanted them to be very cohesive. I didn't do that this year, but um, I didn't quite care for that. So in 2022, I decided I was gonna go with a particular theme and I wanted the pages to be very blank so that I could customize them the way that I wanted to customize them. So before I show you the actual pages, let me show you the theme that I went with. It's more so like the colors that I decided to go with. So all of my pages will incorporate some combination of these washi tapes. I have this thin washi from Happy Planner, this floral washi from According to Allie, my two grid washies from Amazon, 
and my diary washi that I got from the washi tape shop. I will try to leave all of these linked in the description box. And then all of my pages, or most of my pages, will incorporate these also. This is the watercolor florals and the neutral alcohol ink stickers from According to Ally. So any combination of these on my bullet journal pages, just to kind of keep that cohesive look. So let's get into the bullet journal pages. So the first page I have is a goals page. Happy Planner does not incorporate um, a specific goals page, but I wanted to create this so that I could keep track of things that I wanna achieve for the year. Um, I know the page looks really blank, but it's blank because I will fill in my goal categories. I will fill in um, the specific goals that I wanna reach under those categories. All I did was decorate the outside of it. Again, this is that blank dock grid paper using the different washi tapes. I did hand letter 2022 goals. Um, if you want to learn how to do some of this hand lettering, I have a lettering board set up on Pinterest that will help you to kind of practice some some of these uh, fonts but this is what the page looks like in my current planner this is what the page looks like again none of this is kind of cohesive I just use stickers to add around the page here are those categories that I set up for the year and then here are these specific goals that I set for myself so for instance the first category was health and I decided that this year I was going to try to walk a minimum of 5,000 steps a day and drink a minimum of 48 ounces of water every day just something to reach for I have fallen short a number of times but it gives me something to try to achieve each year so I want to do the same kind of layout here right in my categories and then right in the specific goals on the back side of this page I have my 2022 accomplishments again every time something good happens or something that I want to celebrate I will go ahead and write it in on this page I can just put the date and put whatever the accomplishment is and I did the same thing this year I called it yearly accomplishments and then again here's the date and here are some of my accomplishments so for instance the first thing i put in there was um, a new badge that i got on my fitbit i walked 25,000 steps in a day some of these goals do not have to be earth shattering i mean just whatever it is that you want to celebrate i had some awards from my job on there i had that i got fully vaccinated and that i started this youtube channel you know whatever it is that you want to celebrate that way when at the end of the year you can go back and look and say okay these were all the good things that happened the next page I have is my bill tracker this is more of a functional page for me um, I don't always do auto pay so this helps me keep track of all of the bills that I have for the year the way it works is I have January through December listed at the top of the chart and then coming down the left side I will list out all of my bills starting with my monthly bills at the top ones that I will pay every single month of the year my quarterly bill that I pay every three months and then my infrequent bills my infrequent bills are things like um, store credit cards where you may not generate a statement or have to pay anything you know unless you use the card if you don't use the card for the whole year you don't have a statement right so those are infrequent bills and so I would just come in and write in the amount of the bill in that particular month the due date in that month and then most importantly when I paid that bill if it's on auto pay I typically just put in an AP but if not on auto pay then I'll write in the date to make sure that every bill was paid that month I know that if the paid section is blank it's a possibility that I didn't pay that bill and then comes interest and late fees and things like that and we want to try to avoid that so that's the way this chart works it has really worked functionally for me unfortunately I can't show you the after the pen in my current planner because I'd be putting my bills out there for everybody but I think you get the premise of how it works and then the very bottom section down here is for one-time bills things you know you will only have to pay once that could be the taxes on your house that could be the insurance on your house that could be a medical bill that comes in and you know it's just a one-time thing that you have to pay so I have a section set up so you can have the month that you know the bill has to be paid in the amount again the due date and most importantly the paid date for this one, I left the back side of the page blank. This is just in case I happen to get more bills than I anticipate. I highly doubt it, but just in case I leave myself extra room in case I need to write in anything else or create a whole nother chart. 
My next page is my medical appointments page. I created this one because in 2020 when I was bullet journaling, there were times where I needed to go back and reference certain doctor's appointments that I had. And I was stuck flipping through every month trying to find the appointments and I didn't want to have to do that. So I created this page so it gives me an overall summary of every type of appointment that I may have for the year. So this is what it looks like. I have four categories set at the top. You write in the date of the appointment the type of appointment and for that I have this little clipboard down here that has a color code for every type of appointment that you may come across in the year you just put the color of whatever appointment it is the reason for the appointment and then any summary or notes about that appointment so for instance um, for type you may put dentist which is the light pink for reason you may say general cleaning and then you can write any summary notes about your appointment and you would just continue to do that and that way you have an overall summary of every medical appointment you have for the year so I did do that this year I can show you a little bit of what it looks like I have blocked off some of it with this sticky note but this is what the page looks like after the pen this is how the type looks when you color code it so I can go in easily and say oh when did I have lab work every time I see purple I know that was a time where I had lab work the difference that um, I did last year or this year and next year is they had this V and I column and VI means virtual or in person because things are getting a little bit better with the vaccines. Um, most of the appointments are in person. So I decided to omit that column this year and I just kept it with the four. Now this is one of those preset pages. It is this one right here that had the outline going around it. I repurposed it for my medical appointments. So the back side of the page actually contains that long box and the other three boxes. Not quite sure how I'm going to use these yet, but it will be used for something uh, related to my medical appointments. It could be putting in doctor's names and telephone numbers for easy reference. I could add a period tracker or something to that effect. Anything that has to do with medical appointments or medical things. The next page I have is a yearly mood tracker. Now in bullet journaling, I used to set up a mood tracker every single month um, that correlated with the theme that month. But with the Happy Planner, I'm stretched thin because I'm putting a lot of pages into one planner and I didn't want to bulk it up. So I decided to take my mood tracker and put it in one chart. I have January through December listed at the top and then one through 31 listed down the side. So each block in here corresponds to a day throughout the year. And then I will use this color key down here to kind of give my overall mood for that day. I know some people say they go through multiple moods in a day. Um, I just picked the one that just kind of really encompasses is the bulk of the day and so I would just color in each square as the year goes on so I do have this example for this year but I kind of fell off not even gonna lie I went through about half the year and then I stopped and I think for me it wasn't the setup but it was the colors I was using I just wasn't thrilled with them and I gave up probably like what is this the end of June I gave up on it so I did change the color key this year hopefully I will continue with it but this is kind of what it looks like it's like a year in pixels you'll just see the different colors throughout and then you can just look at particular days and see how you were feeling on those days so this is more fun than it is functional on the back side, again, because it is one of those preset pages, this is the one that had the banner at the top. It has those eight open boxes on the back. I figure maybe I could use this to highlight maybe like the eight top days um, throughout the year, eight happiest moments, and just kind of either write in something or use stickers to um, show what happened on those days. For this page, same kind of setup. I did that same chart for the year, but this one is my step tracker. This way I can keep track of how much I am walking throughout the year. Again, part of my health goal was figuring out how many steps I wanted to walk in a particular day. So this gives me an overall picture of how much am I moving. If I know I see colors towards the bottom of my color key, that means I haven't had much movement. If I see some of these darker colors in there, then that means that I have been moving the way that I'm supposed to. So same. Set up January through December 1 through 31 each 
um, block on here corresponds to a particular day. And it looks the same in my current planner. This one is a little more filled out. We're still in December right now, so I haven't completely filled this column out, but I am scheduled to at least finish this tracker here. Now, one thing I did do is I separated the categories a little bit more in terms of my key. Um, these categories in my 2021 planner uh, we're about 2,500 steps for each ca category, but for this year or next year, um, I've separated all the dots into 1,000 step categories. So um, 2,000 to 2,999 is this light gray, you know, 5,000 to 5,999 is the dark pink. So it gives me a better idea of how close I am to my goal. Did I reach it? Did I not? And how far away I was. On the back side, again, because this was a pre-printed page, I have these four boxes set up. I will probably use them in the same manner that I did this year, um, where I wrote out some suggested workouts that could help me reach my step goals. So some of these were from YouTube. I took some of the channels or some of the workouts that I really enjoyed doing and I just kept track of them and I keep track of how many steps I get from those workouts. So if I know in a day I'm a thousand steps short of my goal, I can pick some of those YouTube workouts and say, okay, I know this workout is gonna give me the steps that I need. And I can just keep track of those workouts on this back page. The next page I have is a reading log. This is, again is another fun page for me. I have fallen off with my reading you guys. I really want to get back into it and so this year I started doing a little bit better getting some books from the library, physical books and ebooks and getting back into reading but I wanted to make it a little more fun this year. I did draw a bookcase here with the books inside and some of course stickers with the cat and the clock up here and then I have like a little reading nook down here at the bottom with some stickers. I created this box that'll have my reading goals in there. Maybe it's the number of books I want to read for the year or the number of pages I want to read per day but I will fill those in and then on the back side I have more statistical information where I can write the title of the book, the author. Again, another color code here, whether it's a book, an ebook, or an audiobook, and then the date I start the book and the date I finish the book. And once I finish it, I can fill in the book with the title here and color it in. And hopefully, I can have a fully colorful bookcase. I think I wrote in or I drew in about 30 books here. That would be a miracle for me to finish that many in a year, but we will see how many I get through. This year when I did the tracker, all of that statistical information I had inside of the bookcase, but I just definitely wanted to make it a little more decorative this year, a little more fun. So yeah, I drew in the books this year um, and put this information on the back side of the page. My next page is my things to check out page. This one again was very helpful. It It's not necessarily functional, but I did have to refer back to it a couple times. So maybe you are in the middle of reading a book and somebody suggests another one to you and you can't quite get to it yet. You would use this page to go ahead and write in that book. And so you know when you finished, you could go back and rely on this page to say, oh, what else was on my list? What other restaurants did I wanna go to? What other movies did I wanna see? So I have six categories set up on here for movies, podcasts, restaurants, music, TV shows, and books. Just things to keep track of this year, I only had five categories for it. I had books, restaurants, movies and TV shows combined, music, and on the back side, I had miscellaneous. Um, I did not include miscellaneous on this page yet, but this is that blank dot grid paper. I am gonna go in and probably add some more categories in there, including the miscellaneous, and maybe one for um, like events, things like um, escape rooms or um, ice skating venues, what, whatever it may be. There are so many places that are opening out here in my area, things that I definitely want to try. So I will probably put those additional categories on the back side of this page. And that way I can just write them down every time I see something. And when I decide I don't know what to do, I can come to this page, see if there's a movie I want to watch or event I want to go to, something of that nature. So I really like this page. My next page is probably my most commented on page. I have shown this in some of my Facebook groups and a lot of people say it is something that they would definitely want in their planner. It is my 2022 online order tracker. I am horrible about keeping up with emails from my orders in my um, 
in my inbox it, everything gets lost between here's your um, your order confirmation here's your order um, tracking number here's your um, tracking number through the USPS this is the date that it shipped this is the estimated delivery date they just get so many emails and they get jumbled so I figure as the emails come in I can fill this chart in immediately and as I want to refer to when something is supposed to happen I can come look at this page as opposed to scrolling mindlessly through my email trying to find the particular email that I'm looking for so the way this works I created this chart you have the date that you actually place the order the website that you order from your order number, the tracking number from either FedEx, UPS, USPS, whoever is delivering it, uh, the date that the item shipped, the estimated delivery date, the date you actually received the item, and then the last column was for if the order is correct when you receive it. You could either put a check mark if it is, an X if it isn't. And then because I am absolutely ridiculously insane and I buy constantly, I did do two pages for this. So there is a backside with more space in order to put more orders on there. I hope I don't fill this whole chart in 2022. I really hope I don't. But if I do, that just means you guys get more haul videos. So also on this page, I have a section down here for notes. Again, if the order is not right, I can write in notes about that, you know, how the situation was resolved, what I had to do. And then I just put some more of these decorative washi and quotes down here. This one says, can't stop, won't stop shopping. <laughs> so I pieced that together using quotes from my Gold Star Quote sticker book. But yeah, this was probably a very um, popular page that I put on there. A lot of people said that they want to include this. And then I added my girl here who's in her pajamas pajamas because you know sitting at home ordering online is what I do and it's got a TV screen up here that says it's an add to cart kind of day my next page is a fun page just for me I am in a bowling league I really enjoy it and for fun I like to keep track of all of my bowling frames and bowling scores um, this page was a very very tedious page to set up um, it is made from the blank dot grid paper so I did draw in everything and then add some washi I did draw the bowling pin and the uh, bowling ball down here because I didn't have stickers for that but yeah I started this bowling league um, this year in August and we will finish next year so that's why part of it is filled out already we've already done four weeks of bowling we are coming up on December to bowl that time but yeah I like to just keep track of my frames and keep track of my scores so I created this page obviously to go to with the rest of the planner so I could keep track of all of my bowling stuff and it is two-sided so I have plenty of space to write in all of my scores for the rest of my bowling league so if any of you do sports or you like to keep track of things like that maybe it's you want to keep track of an NFL schedule or the basketball schedule or anything like that you can create a page regarding it and keep track of all of the info that you want to keep track of whether it be the scores or just the schedule so yeah another fun page and again this was still hand lettered by me that same font that is on my Pinterest So the last page that I have in here, it is not my last bullet journal page, but the one last one that I'm gonna show you guys today is my universal packing list. I don't know about you guys, but every time I go on vacation, I struggle to find a packing list to help me. And I still need one, no matter how many vacations I take, I always need a packing list because I always end up forgetting something if I don't refer to a packing list. So to keep from having to find one over and over again, I figured I would just create one using this preset layout. I can write in what I typically take you know for these different categories and that way I can always refer back to this and just say what do I need for first aid what do I need in my toiletry bag my suitcase and my electronics not specific outfits but categories shirts pants shoes uh, belts things of that nature and then it continues on the back side where I have a miscellaneous section beach and pool items important and things to do before you leave the house so this is definitely gonna come in handy for me I do want this to be reusable. I will probably find a piece of acetate that I can add over top of this. That way I can use a wet erase marker and check off every time I pack something that's on the list. And once I'm done packing, I can pull the acetate out. I can wipe it clean and it'll be ready for the next vacation. So I won't have to struggle to find a packing list. It will always be here in this book with me. And then I can always reuse it because of that acetate. 
So these are all of the bullet journal pages that I will be adding to my planner this year. These and a couple others. Again, I did not show all of them. I took some of them out, but there are other pages that I include, including um, a birthday tracker. That way, as I'm keeping track of friends and family's birthdays, I can add them to my monthlies and my weeklies and my catch-all planner. Um, I have another one for the school calendar. So as I'm keeping track of days that my daughter is out of school or they're on half days when report cards get issued things like that I have another page specifically for all of her school stuff you know I just always find ways to make my own pages and make pages that work for me so this is an alternative if you guys do not find what you're looking for in your planner make it work for you this is um, these these uh, happy notes are great especially to get these extra pages so I hope you guys like this video. Let me know down in the comments if you create extra pages for your planner, and if so, what kind do you incorporate? If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos similar to this, hit that red subscribe button. Again, this is just part one of my 2022 planner setup. I will have part two coming to you soon where I actually put my whole planner together and you will see me add these pages into the planner in that setup. So thanks for joining me guys. Catch you in the next one. Bye.